So here we have a steel C sample with something that looks a bit like base 64, but actually has a bit more going on. If we take one of these base 64 like blobs of text, we can go into Cyberchef and try to base 64 decode it, and we can see that that doesn't really work. Now, if we go back here, we can see that each of these variables is handled over in this little section over here and it looks like it's being decoded by this O function. If we look at where O is defined, we can see that it takes a single argument, copies it into this T variable and then does a little for loop, which if we look closely, it looks like it's going up to the maximum length of the input. It's actually working backwards. We can see from this little minus sign here, for each character in the text after being base64 encoded, it's adding the number three. So if we go ahead and try and do that in Cyberchef. We can do an add operation and we can input the number three. And this looks a little bit better, but still looks a little bit like crap. So if we go back to the original code and we look a little bit more closely, we can see that this O decoding function is actually inside of a while loop. And we can see that the condition is Y is greater than six. If we look closely, we can see that Y starts at nine and upon each iteration it is decreased by one so nine takes six we can assume that that's three loops of this function so if we go back here we can do two more adds and go three three almost decoded we can go ahead and add a reverse operation and now we've recovered the original string we can go back to the original code and take the really large encoded blob and we can move that into Cyberchef to try and decode it. And now we end up with what looks like a PowerShell script. So we can go ahead and copy that. We can see that it's taking a zip file from this URL. And if we highlight this zip variable, we can see that it's referenced here. So it's using an invoke web request to download the file to this zip file path, which is going to go to this download folder. If we scroll up a little bit, we can see that the download folder is the temp folder with a random file name. If we look at the end of the code, we can see that after the zip file is downloaded, the archive or the zip archive is expanded. And then the results after the expansion are enumerated using this get child item to find an exe file. And then that exe file is executed via invoke item, which is on this line here. So this code is effectively a downloader with a very simple but kind of different encoding routine. And it's downloading from this URL a zip file and then it's executing an embedded exe.